Okay, folks, uh, we are live. Uh, so for those listening at home, welcome to the Live from the Sword Coast podcast. My name is Kevin Madison, and uh, I will be your filling dungeon master this evening. Uh, tonight, we are, uh, I, I'm joined by one of our regular players from our Friday sessions, uh, Brent. Um, Brent's camera's off on the Google Plus call right now, but we will be seeing his smiling face momentarily on, uh, on Roll20 when we swap over to that. Tonight, uh, we are going to be doing um, another uh, character creation session uh, for Mongoose Publishing's second edition Traveler game. Now, uh, at the outset, um, well, maybe I should say, so what, what we're doing is we're creating a character that will be a recurring character in the, in the campaign. Brent can't join us every second Wednesday on a regular basis because he has a life. <laughs> we don't. Uh, so we are going to be, um, his character is going to be sort of a, you know, uh, like a special guest star kind of thing. Um, the frequency that we've been describing it is like um, how often Q or like O'Brien showed up in uh, The Next Generation. So um, that said, there is going to be some stuff that is fairly secretive about this character. Uh, he's going to have some secrets. So if you are one of the players in my uh, game, kindly fuck off and don't watch this <laughs> because you will be spoiling um, some of the surprises that... Uh, me and uh, Brent have uh, have in store for you. So if you are not one of my uh, players in the Traveler game, then welcome to the session. We hope you enjoy us going through the uh, Traveler uh, character creation session. So um, one of the things, let's see here, Brent, were you able to get your uh, camera working on roll 20? Oh, hell no, of course not. To start everything off, when I put it on to camera and hit reconnect, nothing happened. So I'm going to briefly you using... exit the game and on, pop back Brent, in. What, uh, what browser are you, are you using for it? I am in Chrome. Uh, get out of that and go into Firefox. Uh, uh, I don't have Firefox on my system. I just got... Uh, just quickly, quickly, it'll take you two seconds to download it. Yeah. Um, Fire, uh, Google Plus does not work on, or rather, uh, Roll20 does not work on Chrome anymore. At least it doesn't consistently work. They've they've actually uh, posted uh, stuff on their oh. um, on their website saying that it doesn't interface well with Chrome anymore. Remember how we kept having problems in our D and D sessions for the last little while? That's because okay, because I yeah. always default to Chrome and if... you know me too. I use Chrome for everything. The I only use Firefox for for this okay. uh, because it seems to um, it gets around the problems that we've been having with the other stuff. Uh, Steve was resistant to you. He thought that he was having no problems with it, and then he suddenly started having problems with it uh, recently. So he swapped over to Firefox as well. Uh, right. So while you're doing that, Brent, um, what I'll do is uh, I'll, I'll give you some context here. So what, um, what where the, so what this campaign is about, and you're not you're not going to be part of the uh, the crew of the sort of like the main character ship. So you, you're going to be adjacent to this. But our campaign uh, takes place in a sector known as the Trojan Reaches, and the Trojan Reaches are a sector of space where uh, it's basically, it's sandwiched between two major empires. Uh, one of them is the Third Imperium, which is the sort of third rule of man, the third major empire of, uh, of mankind that has uh, arisen. And you may remember that uh, the Third Imperium is made up, broadly speaking, of two you know, major types of humanity. Uh, there's uh, Soleimani, which are from, from Earth originally, uh, and there are the Villani. And the Velani were a, a race of man or a, a uh, strain of hum uh, humanity that uh, was transported to um, a different planet and then sort of uh, uh, had their own society came out. Uh, they had uh, two massive uh, empires, uh, two uh, interstellar empires that spread out, the first and second Imperium. Uh, although it was at the tailing, I think at the, the second one is the one that was the, the first rule of, of uh, man, of, of Soleimani. Uh, the Villani was a doddering old empire uh, at the time that the uh, the Terrans went into space, and that's a, at about like 2300 AD ish, a little little beyond that. And uh, they managed to actually they fought uh, a series of about 200 years worth of wars with the Villani, and, and surprising, you know, as much of a surprise to, to everyone else, the Soleimani actually won. Um, and that's what what the Third Imperium is is the uh, it's about uh, 1,300 years old now. Uh, it's been 1,300 years, roughly. I could have that wrong. Maybe it's 15, 1,300 or 1,500 years since the Long Night. And the Long Night was when the Second Imperium collapsed. Um, the reason that's important is because the Trojan Reaches were a lot of these, um, a lot of the worlds that you'll encounter as you're traveling through here 
those were worlds that were colonized during that period. And what that means is that there's sometimes between like two and 3,000 years where there's been no contact in uh, with the broader sort of um, uh, the broader interstellar you know society. During the long night, there was uh, some minor empires that arose. Uh, one of those is known as the, or was known as the Sindalan Empire. It was based off of a world called Noricum. It has uh, been several, I, I believe, like 1,500 years, or maybe it's not that long, maybe 600 years. But in any event, it's it's been dead for a very long time as well. Is that the it, new uh, era sort of setting? No, no. The Nor To give you context, so for those listening at home, Brent and I have played uh, different versions of Traveler over the years. And, and the one that, to be honest, like the one version that the two of us are the most familiar with is the new era version that was published in the late 80s, early 90s by uh, Game Designers Workshop. Um, what, it, just as a nutshell, what tra uh, tra uh, Traveler New Era was, was a kind of clearing of a slate for the, um, uh, for the Traveler world. The Traveler universe um, had, I guess, gotten so complex and there were so many different kind of moving parts in it. And it made, uh, it, made it very onerous to be able to publish new material because you had to make sure you're referencing all, all the other bullshit. So what they did is they took a the base system that they had originally developed for their most uh, for the second edition of uh, the Twilight Two Thousand game, they slapped it onto the Traveler setting, and then in the Traveler setting, uh, in uh, sorry the New Era, you are playing characters who are sort of re-exploring the universe that had been wiped out by a incredibly pernicious um, computer virus. Uh, do you remember that Brent? Like the the black yeah. virus place they talked about? Yeah. So that's the that's the one that that Brent is the most familiar with, I think. Um, and that's all I, I should quantify that. That's the latest version I'm familiar with. I have not touched Travelers since the '90s. Right. So this is Brent. Like the the new era is way in the future of where we're playing, and it's never going to happen. Like this is the, okay. the. It's sort of like the in in the history of that game. There are basically any pre you know, pre existing knowledge you have of the Traveler universe just jettison it. Because it's not yeah. going to be applicable. Um, in particular, the new era is just a very—it's a different game. Like you—that's why I don't know if you remember, but like the sort of default assumption when you're playing that game is that you are playing Star Vikings, which are kind of like people going out and trying to rediscover these worlds that were ravaged by the um, virus. Virus. Yeah, and that's not the case. Civilization. Yeah, so like I mean, that's not we're playing it in a there is a developed interstellar society and whatnot. This is a much more it's a sci-fi game. It's not a like a post-apocalyptic sci-fi thing like what uh, New Traveler or uh, New Era was. Okay. Um, so in this world, um, there are uh, well, as I was saying, the, the Trojan Reaches. Um, there's tons of of it's basically seen by the Third Imperium as sort of the barbarian wilds. There is uh, the the closest major sort of uh, subsector uh, is something called the Spinward Marches, which is just coreward of, uh, of this region. The Spinward Marches are seen as like the, in, you know, the, the hicks and sort of the, you know, the yokels of the uh, Third Imperium society. The Trojan Reaches, on the other hand, are seen as fucking savages because it's rife with piracy. And the other thing, I mentioned there were two major interstellar uh, groups that are that have you know control in or or at least a uh, place in the um, uh, Trojan reaches. The other one is the Aslan Hirat. And the Aslan you may remember as being here we go big you know warrior honor driven cat men. What about the dogmen? The one thing I do remember from Traveler yeah, is a those, lot of dogmen. Yeah, no, the dogmen are a race called the Varger. And the Varger are a race that was descended from the um, uh, from uh, canines or like canids that were transported by the ancients. Uh, what what that, you know, um, galactic or interstellar archaeologists have discovered is that at, it was like three 300,000 years or 200,000 years ago, some race transplanted a bunch of stuff from Terran Terra off to different places in the galaxy. Uh, that included, uh, you know, human stock off to what became the Villani um, uh, people, uh, and as well, uh, you know, over the course of the history of the of the different uh, empires, they also um, discovered the um, oh gosh, what are they called? Uh, Zodani. Uh, Zodani are another human de uh, derived uh, race, or, or you know. Um, I guess like splinter race, uh, something like that. And they, um, 
the one major significant difference between them and so the Soleimani and the Villani is that they both, uh, the Zodani embrace uh, psionics. Uh, psychics and psychic powers are a accepted and regularly used part of uh, Zodani society. The Third Imperium, uh, as a result of a really unfortunate um, conspiracy by some psychics to try and like guide development of mankind, uh, psionics are illegal. Now, the Third Imperium, in sort of like one corner of the sector, has you know its presence. And then in the other, the opposite sort of kitty corner from that, that's where the Aslan Hirate has developed, has pushed in. Um, for, for your character, you're going to be human. Like I, I, I've asked everyone uh, in the campaign to not play as subsequent characters or like spin-off characters. Well, I'm going to allow, I'm going to open it up to have like Varger and Aslan and some of the other like uh, human spin-off races that 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 are found in the uh, uh, in the Trojan Reaches. But for the for for your primary character, I want you to be human because. The to me, science fiction is uh, as a like um, uh, a, a form of writing uh, is an exploration of what it means to be us, right? It's taking us as people and using the stories and the settings to sort of to tell um, to tell stories about us. Uh, it's not about you know sci-fi movies are more about like action or other kind of things, but more often uh, than not, the science fiction uh, literature is actually about us and that's what I why I want us to be playing humans is because I want to see humans in these really unusual you know circumstances now um, one important thing to note is that most of the Trojan reaches then uh, are not subject to uh, strict imperial control uh, and that is likely one of the reasons why your character is here because you are going to be playing a psychic character um, uh, for those at home this is one of the things Brent and I have discussed what kind of character he's going to play in, in broad strokes uh, before we um, uh, create this character, but the character creation process in Traveler is a very oracular experience, uh, you'll find, Brent, where you're going to be discovering and meeting your character as we go through this. It's a ton of fun, and it, it's really cool how much it, um, you know, how much the, the character can diverge from what your initial plan is, but uh, broadly speaking, what we're thinking is we're going to, uh, we're going to, steer this guy towards being a kind of a psychic uh, smuggler type character. So um, first thing we're going to do then is let me see. Have you managed to install Firefox? Yeah, you should see me. I'm on uh, roll 20. Okay, I see you. Let's see. Is your camera working? Let me just refresh it. Should be going. It looks like it's working from my end. Okay, so. Are you seeing me? Uh, I am not seeing you. Nope. But I could be because. Hmm. Hold on. Let me, um, you know, let, let me just, uh, what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to share screens here. Uh, and uh, I'll turn my camera off. And that, so I don't know. I mean, sometimes that, that causes a problem. So let me just uh, swap over here. So share screens, locations. We'll go to this. Um, okay. So what am I doing here? Present to everyone. Go. And let me turn my camera off here. And okay. let me refresh. Yeah, because my on your screen I see my icon, but on my screen I see me. Yeah, let's see here. I'm just loading mine up now. Okay, my camera is working in here, and looks yeah, your camera's working too. Fantastic. Okay, okay great. So, um, I that's actually sort of creepy. I'm seeing multiple images of myself on multiple screens. <laughs> it's a narcissist dream. All right. So if you go in here, Brent, what I've uh, I've done. Let me just uh, edit so it's. Uh, it's under your control here in uh, all players' journals and can be edited by, oh, come on, you. Uh, you and me. Okay, so you see I've got a character cleverly named Brent character in here. I like it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you're going to probably want some scrap paper and uh, 2D6 as well, too, Brent. All right, uh, that, give me a second here. Sure. While Brent is doing that, maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll give a little context as to what we're, uh, what the, sort of the long-term plan is. So the, the goal for the character is that um, he's going to be the secret. The reason I don't want uh, my players to be listening into this session is because uh, Brent's character is going to have some links to the uh, Zodani consulate. The, the, um, they're not necessarily aggressive, but they are certainly a rival to the Third Imperium. And while they don't have a direct connection to the Trojan Reaches, 
they do have uh, scouts and so forth that, that they send out there. Anywhere that, that potentially can cause problems for the third Imperium, they're going to have people there. And in the Pirates of Drenax campaign as well, there is a really fucking cool ship that happens to be haunting, you know, kind of making its way around in the Trojan Reaches that Brian's character does not necessarily know about yet. And that the guys, certainly the, the other players in the campaign, they certainly don't know about. But it's this ship that's got some like crazy high-tech stealth stuff. It's got a full uh, squadron of psychic commandos on board. Uh, so it can be this really scary, and my plan is, is for this thing to be this really scary, persisting threat, and it is going to be connected somehow to Brent's character, uh, because he, they're they're both sort of working for for the um, uh, for the Zodani, one directly and one maybe indirectly. We're going to find out tonight just how you know how uh, how Brent's character came to be connected with them and uh, and whatnot. That's just. Part of the fun. We did, we can't tell what those connections are going to be right now, but we will see what uh, what those connections are once we go through this uh, character creation process. Um, as you can probably tell for those listening at home too, this is uh, one of my favorite games to make characters for. It's it's really just a, a ton of fun to make uh, characters. Hey, Brent, sir, I was just giving some uh, background uh, to the listeners at home for uh, where your character is going to fit in here. So I just spilled some secrets that you don't know. <laughs> oh, I guess you're lucky I got a mic. I can't hear anything until I've said it. I know, exactly. Well, because I was, before we logged on, I was talking to you, and I, and I, was, and I realized I'm like, he's got his fucking headset on. I, he, can't, uh, he can't hear me. Okay, so, Brent, what I need you to do then is grab 2D6. Not those fucking bone dice that are that are crooked. Don't use Damn those you. things. Damn I, you. I, I, they're not crooked. They're lucky. They're not fucking lucky. They're broken. So well, please do that not too. use those things. <laughs> you know exactly the ones I grabbed. I know they were. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll go for the purple Conan dice that you. Uh, uh, looking at old uh, Brent had picked up a pair of very cool uh, bone carved uh, dice from uh, a local um, kind of festival in in uh, near where uh, we both grew up. Uh, but the dice, and he used them in our uh, Iron Kingdoms campaign that went on for about two and a half years. And routinely, he would roll like a fiend. Trouble is, is that that experience is a very big outlier for how Brent normally rolls. Yeah, and it, it's funny because it, I've totally it is statistically different than how I normally roll. I think it's probably statistically broken. But looking at the dice, they appear normal. I don't know if they're <laughs> carved somehow that has them roll a certain way or something, but uh, they do seem to roll awesome. <laughs> Okay, so what um, what you're going to have here now, I, I just noticed that, hold on, does, let me see, I'm just going to go to powers. Oh, sweet, okay, so I'm going to start on there. So, uh, because your character, Brent, is, uh, we know he's going to be psychic, there are other ways of sort of rolling the, um, you know, rolling up characters. Do you have the uh, the character or the, um, what do you call it, the core rulebook open? No, but give me a second, I shall open it. Sure, you'll want to open it, because uh, it's it's more fun for you to follow along in, in what, uh, you know, what we're doing is we go through the life paths. <clears throat> Excuse me. And actually, you know, one option I'll give you, Brent, is if you want to just use the, the dice roller in roll 20, we can do that too. Oh, yeah. doesn't matter. Uh... Whatever, whatever your preference. It actually might be easiest to track the results, but I, I don't want to... Steve is, has not uh, seen the... Like, he normally rolls like a fiend, but uh, roll 20 seems to just take some... Sometimes it just punishes him. So it's up to you. If it punished me, I'd say that uh, that's par for the course. <laughs> well, we're trying not to go for that. We want you to have some some terrific uh, uh, skills here. Well, you know what? I'm going to go old school. Just We used to game together all the time, so it kind of reminds me of that. Sure, absolutely. So what I need you to do then, Brent, is could you please roll 2d6 seven times? Sorry, 2d6 seven times? Yes, please. And you just uh, want to summing them? Uh, yes, uh, no, not all in total. Just roll 2d6, sum those two, then 2d6, we'll sum those two. What we're doing is we're generating your attributes or your characteristics. If you just want to read them off, I can tell you what the results are. 10, 7, oh, 10 again. Nice. I'm hoping this game we have to roll high. Otherwise, I'm, gonna, I'm doing <laughs> well. I'm going to yeah. go with that. Okay, so you got 10, 7, 10. 4. Yep. 10 is a good number. 
Yeah. And then I'll throw a dice on the ground just for good measure. You know what I started doing is keeping a, a little. I've got a small like gift box thing that I use for rolling because uh, I'm sick of uh, picking the fucking dice up off the floor. Uh, nine. Yeah. Well, you think you know after gaming for like I don't know twenty five years, I'd be coordinated enough not to fucking throw them around. <laughs> well, we got um, also age weighing down on us as well. So. Oh God. <laughs> I uh, I don't even know if I want to admit this since we're broadcasting, but I was at an event earlier this evening um for a, a networking event and i'm standing having a beer eating appies uh talking to some colleagues thinking holy fuck my my hip and knee ache <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's a shit that uh, i i or, or uh last week well midway through last week my one uh, knee started fucking up and it started hurting and feeling like really tight um and it, that lasted for about four days and then it just went away and like i haven't done anything that that's no, not supposed to happen <laughs> it's the worst one. Last time I moved uh, with uh, when I when I carried shit uh, in, I ended up walking with a limp for a week, and I didn't actually injure myself. There's no point where I twisted my ankle or any shit like that. It was just that my body was like, "No, look, you're too old to do this anymore." Uh, I know, which is scary. Time? What happens roll. when we're really old? Uh, yeah, and the roll, roll, last roll, roll, sorry, was seven. Seven. Okay. So, Brent, so, if you want, if you want to grab your scrap paper, you've got. Uh, did you write those down, or do you want, do you want me to read? I've them got there? ten, seven, ten, four, ten, nine, seven. Yeah. Okay. So here's what, um, if you look on your, uh, on your character sheet on roll 20, um, you have, uh, seven attributes or characteristics. Um, most of these should make sense for you. Like your strength is obviously your strength, your physical, you know, um, ability to exert force. Your dexterity is your, uh, physical coordination. Your endurance is how resilient, uh, you are. Your intellect is your, uh, intellectual acumen, uh, intellectual acumen, I should say, acumen. I'm making up words here. Uh, uh, your education is how well educated you are, uh, and your social is your social standing. That's how um, influential you are, uh, uh, socially speaking. And then you also have a special trait, which is your psionic strength. Um, I'm going to need you to assign those numbers to those uh, attributes. Now, those attributes won't necessarily stay that way. Depending on how far we go into your careers, you may be affected by aging, and there are also opportunities through your different careers to see your attributes go up as well. So uh, to, you know, to let you know where the modifiers sit, um, anything that is a five or less, like your four, that's there, uh, is five or uh, three to four, sorry, three to five is a minus one. Bonuses start at nine. Uh, you didn't roll anything that was higher than a 10, uh, but a 12 is plus two and a 15 is plus three. So why don't you go ahead and go in there and assign what your uh, your ratings are uh, for your attributes. And remember, this is just a starting off thing. This is, we're meeting this character. Okay, actually, hold on. Before we go any further, uh, I do need to do one more important thing. This is something very different from other uh, role-playing games. We name your character first. Then we go through character creation. Uh, and it's it's it has an interesting psychological effect by doing it that way because you get to know that particular character better now um the other characters in the campaign have used uh randomly generated uh names because i've got some pretty cool random name generators here so i'm going to ask you to do the same but i'll give you the option of either picking the culture you want to be from or to randomly generate what culture in terms of like modern like earth cultures or yeah, modern earth cultures. cultures. No, I don't want you know what because again like you know with with what I said in uh, before in mind about what uh, you know what I see science fiction being about. I don't want characters named like Zap fucking Star Laser or something like that. <laughs> you know, like it just it's, it takes away from I think the the the, the not real but like the, the sort of like reality that that this game actually tries to sort of reflect that it's just normal people in really extraordinary you know circumstances. So uh, do you want to uh, pick a culture or do you want to uh, roll randomly? Yeah, let's roll randomly. I, I, if this system is like the other one, you get some pretty interesting random lows and career. Yeah. Uh, so give me your, a D10 roll first. All right. Four. A four? D4. Oh, <laughs> you're Greek. Ooh. <laughs> do you want to, Steve's character is actually Greek as well. Did you want to stick with that or you want to go, uh, you want to roll again? No, that's fine, and maybe sure, that's okay. something we bond over. Yeah. Now give I... me a uh, give me a percentile roll. This is will you for your first name. Twenty-two. 
27. 27. Uh, okay, so it's uh, Demetrius. And then give me another percentile roll, please. Sixty on the dot. Sixty on the dot. Nice. Demetrius Petru is your name. Did I spell the last name? Uh, P E T R O U. You know what I can do, Brian? Is I can just quickly edit your uh, character sheet to have that on there. Oh. All right. So Demetrius, this is what this is going to be, Brent. Is um, when we first meet Demetrius Petru. Um, this is, this is him at 18. Uh, this is, <clears throat> you know, before he's, uh, set off on, on, um, any kind of adulthood, we're going to be picking some skills as, uh, as well to reflect his, um, you know, his formative years, but, uh, that's the character we're meeting first off. So, uh, go ahead and assign those. It looks like you're starting to assign those. Yeah. This is actually the first uh, psychic character uh, that I've generated as well, too. So this will be really interesting. Now, I want you also to think about what type of homeworld uh, that your character would have uh, grown up in. Like what, uh, whether it's a place that, uh, you know, whether he grew up on a planet, uh, whether he grew up uh, traveling, uh, whether he grew up well, somewhere in the uh, Third Imperium, somewhere elsewhere. Um, whether he, um, uh, the, the planet, if it is a planet, whether it was a place where the environment allowed him to be outside, uh, or whether it was something that required like vac suits or just rebreathers, um, whether it was a place that had high technology or low technology or, um, industry, agriculture, whatever. Think about what his, uh, his, in, his early years would be like. One thing to bear in mind is that uh, psionics are illegal in um in the third imperium now the third imperium is not like you know the empire in star wars right like where they're on the present they seem to be able to have eyes everywhere and whatnot uh they're one of the things that um that makes the traveler universe sort of function or one of the accepted realities of it is that there is no such thing as faster than light uh, communication uh any communication between different uh different systems travels at the speed of a ship and ships have what they're able to do is jump between one and about six or seven parsecs that's it once they do that generally they'll spend uh they'll have to spend time in a system to get more fuel and then go to the next one so the way that the third imperium is is there is a overarching they basically control space but they don't necessarily have a direct control over what's going on on any given planet so even though psionics are illegal the reason I mention this is because you still could be from the third Imperium. It's just that you're, you know, you were kept hidden somewhere. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I'm sorry. I'm bad with names. The name of, uh, the, uh, the, the political unit or the, like, the empire that I'm associated with is called what again? Well, you're not, you're not associated with the Zodani. You're going to be at some point, but that's not where you grew up. Okay. What if, uh, I grew up in the Third Imperium. I wasn't Zodani, but I end up being sort of a Zodani wannabe. Sort of, I I get ostracized uh, over the process of time and say, "Hey, I want to, you know, yeah, be your culture think, and your race and like that." Yeah. So I he's think sort of like a chip on his shoulder. He's not, you know, he's not one of them, but he wants to be one because he's been rejected so by his own people. That's exactly, yeah, that's totally what I was thinking, that he, it's sort of a chip on the shoulder against the Third Imperium, but he may not, you know, o over the course. Well, let's see what happens over the course of his life, first off. Okay. Uh, and then in the course of the campaign, it will be interesting to see how, you know, um, how he responds to the Zodani that he he meets and, and the things that they're asking him to do. Um, okay, great. Well, that, that looks good. Uh, so your character is, um, you know, uh, he, he's... Uh, 
more educated than um, than normal. He's quite clever. He's actually uh, quite strong in in uh, psychic abilities, and he's not. He's very weak though. He's he's kind of spindly, although nimble. So that's uh, cool. That's how we look now. Because you are, then um, I'm assuming uh, anti grav tech is pretty common, right? Uh, it is, yeah. Well, it's common depending on where you are. In the Third Imperium, it's it's fairly common, yeah. In the Trojan Reaches, it can be, you know, uh, it can really, really depend on where you are. So I wonder if we could explain the low strength is maybe grow up in a low G environment? Sure. Uh, could be. He's also just more of a cerebral kid. I mean, he's, yeah. he's you know, he's got, uh, he's very strong, uh, psychically speaking. Uh, he's quite clever and he's fairly well educated. So he could just be a, like a very bookish kid who also happened to be, you know, not, um, you know, not, not terribly active. Let's okay. So here's, here's one thing. The reason I want you wanted you to, you know, I don't want to back you away from that. If you, if you like the idea of him being a, like a low G or, or, uh, either. I'm just throwing out, we can modify. modify that as things come. Sure. Well, this is, um, so one of the things you're going to, let's get your background skills picked first and then we'll do your uh, psionic things. I'm going to ask you to turn to page eight of the core book. Okay. And then what you'll see at the bottom is there's a list of background skills. Uh, do you have that? Uh, yeah. Okay. So what um, what you're going to do is you are going to pick uh, four of those. Your uh, education characteristic gives you a plus one, so it'll be three plus one. So and then what I'm going to do, Brent, is I'm just going to switch you over to the skills here first. So uh, when you just tell me what skills you're picking and we'll start adding them to your skill list. Okay. If you have questions about what they are, just, uh, go ahead and ask to you. I'll, I'll try and answer those. Uh, before you got on, I went, I was going through the other guys uh, character sheets and I realized that because I didn't sort of help them with the, uh, the actual, like, you know, where to find the skills and, and stuff like that. Uh, Steve ended up not filling in his, uh, skills at all and uh, Jeff filled them in all wrong <laughs> so I'm going to try to avoid that problem with you yeah you don't need to suffer over this like you, you'll get more skills so just just pick four of them all right well you can start me off with carouse mechanics and streetwise okay carouse mechanic and streetwise now here's the thing Brent I want you to think of why these tie in story wise. Don't think of where your character is going to end up because you have plenty of opportunity to do that. Think of it as him as this is the stuff he, he learned when he was a kid. So he grew up in an urban environment. Uh, mechanics would be some type of a hobby. And crowds would be sort of him trying to uh, fit in with social peers. Okay. Uh, and so then I. Fra I'm, I'm guessing I'm administ probably an admin profession or vac suit I don't really see as a sort of like a youth thing. Well, it depends on where you grew up. Yeah, um, I guess if, that if you If you grew up in low G in the sense that you were on a space station, you would have had vac suit training probably because you, you know, if you, uh, if you need, if there's a, a rupture somewhere, you, that's how you stay alive. You need to know how to operate one of those things. But if there's something else that, that appeals to you more. I guess there'll be part of the process, I'm assuming there'll be like a formal like education process, right? That I'm not yeah. worrying about right now. Yeah, absolutely. So that there's a possibility of university, there's a possibility of military training. Um, we're gonna go through what what like is likely gonna happen is you will well, it depends. I mean, like he could have been thrown into psychic training right away. All right. Well, let's go with back suit then. That's something different. Back suit. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that's. I mean, fit, that fits with your um, what you were saying about his uh, um, the low G. So it could have been that he was, if not uh, fully in, uh, you know, on a space station. Uh, he certainly spent a lot of time there. Or either he's on a smaller planet, like, you know, something like Mercury size or something like that, that just happens to have poor or no atmosphere. Um, okay. So that is your character. Um, that's you as a, uh, as a, a child. Now let's see what, 
I'm going to assume that you got uh, Sonic testing done. So I'm going to get you to turn to page 196 now. Okay. Okay. And what we're going to do is we are going to see if you are, see what, what powers uh, you, um, you learned. And the way we do this is we make a roll, a psi roll, for, uh, for each of the different powers, for telepathy, uh, clairvoyance, telekinesis, awareness, and teleportation. The thing is, is some of them are, you can see that they've got a positive modifier, so they're just easier to learn. But for each roll that you make past the first one, you take a minus one. So oh, it okay. is less likely that you're going to learn uh, the, the next one. Now, the, okay, so it's done. One second, I'm just trying to find the, the difficulty here. Yeah, I know. I'm so I was going to ask you. I'm like, what is the difficulty? I think it's an eight. An eight is the basic uh, difficulty. Uh, so I'm just going to. Okay, I think uh, that sounds right to me. I'm just looking at what the things. Hold on here. So your side DM is plus two, and the telekinesis three, six, six. less than the number she needs. Okay, I see. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I think it's an eight is the, the default number. So which of those would you like to, uh, to roll first? You know what I'll do, Brent, just to double check it. I've got... Uh, Something for the previous edition, it's Scion, and th there's really not a, a huge difference between the, the editions. Um, let me just, some of these ones, they do a better job of uh, explaining what the difficulty is. Right. Okay. So what they've done is they cut and paste it from the previous edition. They changed the way that the, you do, um, you calculate difficulty numbers. This is an eight. So you're going to need an eight or higher in order to, um, uh, to succeed on this. So, um, which one, and I'm going to get you to roll them on, uh, uh, roll 20 here. Uh, cause you can just, uh, if you click on, I'm going to go to powers. Now you click on your sonic strength. Uh, it should just make a roll for you. Okay. Cool. You know, let's. Add, so here, first off, which of the so which of the ones do you want to check first, Brent? Uh, let's go for telekinesis first. Telekinesis first. Okay, so telekinesis gives you plus two to your dice modifier. And yeah, so go ahead and click on Sonic Strength. Let's see how you do. The. Um, well, oh, that didn't roll. Oh, modifier. Uh, no modifier. Oh no! Did you add a modifier? No. Oh, I should add plus two, right? No, hold on one sec here. Why is there a boon bane on there? Oh, it's if there's a boon or a bane. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. So um, your roll, Brent, was a four, uh, which means uh, even with the plus two modifiers, not good enough. So you, you do not know telekinesis. Um, okay. What's the next one you want to try for? Let's try telepathy. Telepathy, okay, so you get minus one with that, which means you, the net is going to be plus three. So go ahead and roll again. Am I minus one for each roll or only minus one if I'm successful? No, no, minus one for each one you roll, for each one you Cause attempt. Cause it, oh, yeah, for acquisition check. I thought for acquisition. Nope. All right. Go ahead and roll. Hey, there you go. Okay, so you, uh, under your powers, uh, you want to add telepathy, and you've got uh, that at skill level of zero. Great. Okay, uh, what's the next one you want to test? Uh, awareness. Awareness, okay, so that is your second, or third one, so you got minus two, so it's a net minus one to your roll. Oof. Nope, not awareness. All right, um, let's try clairvoyance. Clairvoyance, okay, so that's a minus three, so no dice modifier to this. Oh, 
Oh, fuck me. So close. Um, have we gone through all of them then? Except for teleportation. Except for teleportation. So teleportation is a minus four to your dice roll. So you need to roll 12 mm -hmm. in order to get past. No, you need to roll 11 because of your dice modifier. There we go. Fingers crossed. I like my bone <laughs> dice, damn it. <laughs> okay. So um, what that means is that the only thing that you have naturally um, learned is uh, telepathy. All right. So, um, okay. So that is what you, um, yeah, what you've learned. So, uh, let's see here. Now let's go to uh, figure out what you want to do for your first career. So, one of the things that, um, before you get too far away from where we are in that book, Brent, I'm going to get you to look at page 204. This is the Scion career. Do you have that? Uh, let's give it one second. Yeah. So um, you'll notice on here that there is a something called qualification. Uh, do you see that where it says size six plus um, in the top left? Top left of the page on page 204. Yeah, that's where I am. Uh, Does it say Scion, Brent? Yeah. Okay, I see. Yeah, qualification, Psi, so 6 plus. What that means is that uh, in order to qualify for a career, uh, you need to make or make that roll. Um, and you'll notice that there's a dice modifier. You get minus one for each previous career. So the longer that you, you take to go into the Scion career, the harder it is to actually do it. All right. Because, you know, time has passed, so you need to do, you know, training. Now, your pre-career training, like university uh, or uh, military academy, does not count towards that. Okay. It does count towards your time. Like, it takes you time to do that, so you're older, uh, but it doesn't uh, apply a dice, a dice modifier. So I only mention that because um, you, if you look at page now, uh, page 19, Brent, that tells you the rest of the careers you can train in. So one of the things to sort of think of is, is this a guy who just had some natural raw talent and then never developed it, uh, his, his psychic abilities, or is he someone who did spend time, you know, with formal training and whatnot as a um, scion? And if so, did he do that later in his life? Did he do that earlier? So then someone who the developed other. it, but someone who did it maybe uh, a bit later. Okay, cool. So then let's see how that uh, how that goes. So first thing is, your kid, so you're 18 years old. Um, would you want to go to university or to military academy? Uh, giving his physical attributes, he probably uh, gravitated towards um, university over military. Okay. So what um, you need to roll then is I need you to make an education check. Uh, and the difficulty is going to be a seven or higher. This is to get into university. Okay. Uh, physical dice or uh, roll 20? Uh, just click on roll 20. Okay. I'll let you know, too, that both Jeff and uh, Steve's characters had significant setbacks in their life. They still ended up with really awesome characters. Hey, fucking awesome. Okay, so yeah, with uh, flying colors, you easily uh, qualified to get into um, university. I'm looking on page 14 right now, Brent. Yeah. So what I need you to do is choose, uh, take a look at the list of skills under university there. Then choose one to be at level zero and one at level one. Uh, you also get your education goes up by one. So I'm just going to bump that up. And you can tell me what uh, what skills you, you picked from that list there. Yeah, give me a second. One is a zero, one is a one. And then we'll see if you graduate. <laughs> Steve's character f uh, got caught cheating and flunked out of university. Nice. Yeah.
And I get, you said three? Uh, you get, no, uh, one at zero and one at one. One at zero, one at one. Yeah, so like the way, the, uh, what zero is, Brent, is just you don't suffer a dice modifier. If you're not trained in something, you take a minus three uh, to use in that skill. If you are trained, then you don't take that that penalty. Uh, so your initial skills, like your your first career that you go through, you get all the skills that are listed as the career skills at zero. Um, and then, but then after that, everything advances by one. Okay, well, let's go with uh, language one, astrogation zero. Cool. Okay, so language one means that uh, not only will you be um, uh, conversant uh, in, in a lot of different languages, you actually have training in one specific language, and we'll talk about what that is uh, afterwards. So I'm just going to put a special, a specialty here, because you've got a specialty in your language, and we'll give it a name afterwards. And sorry, what was the second one, Brad? Astrogation. Astrogation is zero. Nice. Okay. And you cool. wanted to get the hell off home and or out of home or whatever Rocky's from. Sure. And astrogation sounds like a way to do it. Now let's see if uh, he graduated university. So please give me an intellect check. Right. You need a seven or higher. If you roll 11 or higher, then you graduate with honors. Hey, 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 fuck yes. Nice. Okay, so the way that means, Brent, is your language is actually a two. Okay. And your astrogation is actually a one. Oop, okay, there we go. And astrogation is, uh, nope, it's an education skill. Okay. Um, you also, your education is increased by another two which is awesome. So your education is now 12. Okay. Uh, graduation gains dice modifier plus two to qualify for a bunch of civilian careers, including agent, army, citizen, uh, entertainer, journalist, uh, Marines, Navy, scholar, scouts. Um, graduation allows a commission role to be taken before the first term of a military career. So long as, so you, you may, if you decide to go into the military, you could start off as an officer. Um, cool. so that's, uh, that's it. That's the benefits of graduating with honors. This brings your character to 22 years old. University. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, uh, what does he do after graduating? Um, probably. So if I go to the army as a commissioned officer trying to get off the back world. That would give me uh negative for developing my psy psionics later on, correct? Yes, because it would uh, that would be your first career, which would mean a minus one to the chance to qualify for being a scion. Well, let's go with the scion thing. I'm not going to be. I didn't get much in the way of powers. Let's see if I can be. So, or I'm going to be a very okay. minor scion otherwise. So the first thing I need you to roll then, Brent, is to see if you qualify for it. Uh, so scion is not one of those. Uh, uh, careers that, that uh, you get a benefit from uh, from doing so well in university uh, but let's see here one second I think you oh uh, for, before we do that Brent give me a 2d6 roll please we're going to roll on events this is what happened during um, university and... You can roll those physically if you want, Brian. That's that's just probably. Yeah, it's easier than popping up this thing. Sure. Here. Uh... Ooh, uh, box cars. Uh, Twelve for me. Twelve. You gain wide-ranging recognition of your initiative and your innovative approach to study. Increase your social by one. So your social is now an eight. Yay! That's awesome. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so I mean, you were clearly an all-star. You really excelled in, in university. Now, let's see if you can qualify for uh, the Scion career. So go ahead and give me a Scionic, uh, we'll go to Powers, click on Scionic Strength. And let's hope for six or more. Actually, five or more is what you need uh, to roll, but it'll include your modifier anyway. Oh, motherfucker. Oh, fuck. Okay, so this is interesting. So what happens is when you fail to qualify for something, Brent, um, you cannot uh, enter that career this term. So you went looking for it, but you couldn't get in. What you can do 
is once in your life, you can submit to the draft, which means you're going to be drafted into one of the arms of military service, or you can spend your career or that phase of your career as a drifter. Drifters found on page 26. And is one of these paths necessary or just options? No, it's because you you failed. But now you must submit to either the draft or take the drifter career. Does commission draft. officer apply for a draft or no? Uh, no, because you... Let's see here. No, because you didn't choose that as your first career. You chose Scion. It's oh, chose right. So that, oh, so that bonus only was a one-off. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, this is part of the fun with this character creation thing is we get to we're we're learning about what's happened to him. You know, it's it's interpreting what the dice rolls are. Your character, oh, okay. is, you know, you decided like, all right, I'm gonna go off and I'm gonna, and, you know, he had all these options available to him, but he's like, no, fuck it, I I need to develop these powers more. And you're probably like, you know, going through the underworld and whatnot, and you just could not make any proper contacts and blew through all your money and and wasted the 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 opportunities you had. So you find yourself in a position where you can spend the next four years as a drifter, or you can uh, try, uh, you know, try your, your luck at the draft. You only get to do the draft once in your in your life. Oh yeah, and the draft is military, right? Draft is military. We will roll randomly and see what uh, what branch of the military you get drafted into, and then you, you automatically succeed. I'm gonna go drifter. It doesn't sound like someone who's looking to find a psychic trainer would join the military. They'd probably. No. Be a drifter, wanderer, looking for that experience yeah. or that. Yeah, and I kind of, uh, I kind of like like that. That seems to fit with you with where 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 we know this dude's going to end up. That he sort of he had. It's I keep thinking of like uh, what's his name, that McCandless guy from um, uh, who like after university just you know hitchhiked his way up to Alaska and then lived on his own in the middle of nowhere. You had all these opportunities and you sort of like you know fell off the grid. So if you look at page twenty six the three assignments that you pick and the assignments are kind of like sub careers um barbarian obviously is not going to be you didn't go to live on a primitive world actually hold on i, I before i say that you maybe did that um i kind of like the idea of a space bum under wanderer under wanderer yeah i love that i thought that would be that would be the, uh, the the best fit for what where we're going but i i wanted to give the option of the other ones too uh what i was going to say is that uh, just like in, you know, Asimov's maxim that, um, you know, sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. There are some primitive societies that uh, do have a form of supporting, you know, psychic uh, characters and psychic training, uh, but the um, they don't understand it. As, they think of it as magic or like shamans or whatever. But anyway, um, okay, so then what we're going to do, Brent, is because this is your first uh, official career, if you take a look at the service skills that are there, uh, you're going to get a zero in each of those. So you get a zero in athletics. You get a zero in uh, melee. Uh, there we go. So you learn to fight a little bit. Uh, zero in recon. Uh, you got a zero in streetwise, which you already had. Uh, you got a zero in stealth. You got a zero in survival. Okay, so this is really school of hard knocks for your for uh, for old Demetrius. Okay, so once we go through the um, service skills, uh, then what we do is we roll for survival. This is how successful you were in this career. So the survival for a wanderer is an endurance of seven or more. So you need to make an endurance check, and you want to roll seven or higher. Yeah. Let's see how he weathered this uh, rough life. Oh, shit. So he failed. So would you give me a D6 roll, please? Let's see what happened. All right. Five. Five. You were betrayed by a friend. Uh, one of your contacts or allies betrays you, ending your career. 
that contact or ally becomes a rival or an enemy. If you have no contacts or allies, then you're betrayed by someone you never saw coming and you still gain a rival or an enemy. In addition, roll 2d6. If you roll a 2, you must take prisoner career as your next turn. Oh, God. So give me a... T you just go ahead and roll your uh, your dice and your physical dice. And make sure you don't roll a 2. I know. No snake eyes. Oh, 9. Nice. Good, good, good. Okay. So that means in uh, you spent phase 2 as a drifter wanderer and uh, you gained an enemy or a rival all right so that was uh we're now at uh, age 26 um wow so that was a, a pretty crazy uh couple of years for you you really uh developed yeah, i didn't get any benefits out of it eh? i guess because i failed well you, you know you uh you don't get to get any benefits and uh, you don't roll for events okay so, um, okay, so then for your next career, do you want to try for Scion again, or do you want to try for something different? Sure, let's go for Scion. I'm not, not going to make much of a Scionic character who uh, only well, has one power. Have, I mean, and you still got, like, one of the things is, if you look at these, these psychic powers, all the powers that are listed under the, the telepath talent, you can do all of those things. Okay. It's just that you're not, you know, you automatically get a chance to do those. It's just that some of them are going to prove to be more difficult than others. And one thing to remember is that in um, in Traveler, you can choose to take more time. You'll, you'll find somewhere in the in the um, in the uh, uh, core book, there's a list of the, like the time chart. And every step down on the time chart, you get a plus two dice modifier. Okay. okay uh, so well, let's try Scion again. So I need a six or better. You need a seven or higher now because it's your you've used one. Uh, you've gone for one career. All right, so I'm rolling psionic strength. Yeah, yes, please. Okay. There we go. Oh, yes. Nice. You qualified. Okay. Outstanding. Okay. So that's 214. Uh, that's page uh, 204. Oh, 204. Okay, so now what, what happens is um, there are three different assignments that are there. For Do you have that, Brent? The page? Uh, I do now, yeah. Okay, so the three assignments are Wild Talent, where you develop your powers without formal training. There's Adept, where you're a scholar of the sound disciplines. And there's Psy Warrior, where you combine combat training with Psyonic Warfare. What the reason that the, the, what those give you, Brent, is you will get a chance to, to uh, pick which chart you want to roll on. Now, you can always roll on personal development, you can roll on service skills. And because your education is a 12, you can roll on advanced education. And then you also pick uh, one of the assignments and you can roll on that one as well. And now you only get one roll per um, uh, per career or per pass. Okay, so I so that only makes a difference if I choose to make my roll on whether it's an adept, wild talent, or psychic warrior. It will also depend because if you successfully, uh, if you survive that uh, career pass, that means you will get a rank up too. And there's benefits you get, and they're different for each of the different uh, assignments. So you'll see, like, if you get to rank one as a Psy Warrior, you get Gun Combat 1. If you get rank one as a Adept, you get Science, Cyan Ecology at 1. And if you become a Wild Talent, you get Survival or Streetwise at 1 at your first rank. And the ranks, the, the higher you get in your ranks, the better your benefit rolls will be. Because you get, if you get to three, I think you get one extra roll, and then there's like a plus one to, uh, if you get to five, it's a plus one to all of your benefits rolls, and you get a bunch of extra ones. So the longer you, you're able to stay in one career, the more uh, the more benefit there is, long term. Okay. Well, I don't see him as an adept, because he would have found that better now. He tried, he failed, he wandered. So either things finally worked out on its own or someone came and taught him. Well, here's one thing to consider, Brent, is that take a look at the survival check. Uh, for a wild talent, it's a six or higher for your social. For an adept, it's an education roll of four or higher, which means you would automatically pass it because you just, you've got a plus two education modifier. For a psi warrior, it's an endurance roll of six or higher and you got no modifier. Interesting. Mm. 
right? The mechanical uh, tra um, uh, chances, it shouldn't be the, the thing that, that necessarily drives it. I just wanted to make sure I, I you know, pointed out that some of them will be more difficult to, to stay in. It's also worth looking at the advancement thing as well. Like your chance of advancement of surviving and advancing as a side warrior is uh, uh, not, I mean, it's it's not horrible, but it's not great because it's, it's a six or higher for each of those. Whereas an adept, you've got a four or higher um, education role and an eight or higher education role, respectively, which is an auto success in the first and a six or higher for the second one. Right. And uh, what was the basis for the ad, uh, for uh, the wild talent? Uh, the wild town is a social to survive and intellect for uh, advancement, and your intellect is a plus one. Oh, okay, I see. Surviving, okay, right at the top there. I see where you're looking. Yeah, the advancement is how you go up your ranks, and the survival is just so you successfully get through the whole, you know, four years without leaving that career. Uh, so the depth the easiest to get through, and then becomes harder. Where cyborg warrior is harder at first, and well, not necessarily every. Um, every like you know peer, uh, pass that you take through a career, you will roll survival to see if you got through it and stayed in that career. And then if you did, then you get to roll on the events chart, which will give you some other cool stuff. If you fail, you roll in the mishap chart. And if you fail your survival, you're out and you can't go back to that career. Except for Drifter. Drifter is the thing you can always go back to. I think I've done enough drifting. <laughs> well, okay, I guess uh, hedge my. I've uh, I've failed a lot so far, so I have two failures and a success. So probably should hedge my bets and uh, go for an adept. Okay. So then, um, which of the four um, charts do you want to roll on? Personal development, service skills. Advanced education or adept? Um. Oh, and here's the neat thing. If you roll a skill for a talent that you do not possess, you may make another roll to acquire that talent. Okay. Um, let's go with uh, let's go with the service skill. Service skills. Okay. Give me a D six roll. And there's stuff here I might get that's different. Okay. I got um, a three, so that makes me ooh telekinesis. So you get to test for telekinesis again. So this is your. Let's see here. Uh, you've rolled four, you rolled five previous, ugh, um, oh, okay, I see that still, I've still have to apply the previous shitty modifiers, right? Yeah. Uh, um, so my hope of actually, I should not roll on the service skills then, really, because my hope of getting something is really bad because I have to apply a minus, what, three or four already? Uh, well, that's, that's what you rolled, so we're, we're learning as we go here. Um, okay. So go ahead and give me uh, another Sonic strength check, please. Okay. Let me just read through this here. Oh, you roll nine, though. Oh. Uh... Telkinesis is plus two, that makes it an 11. Minus five means it's a six. Um, I'm just trying to see if... Yeah. Uh, because it would suck if it's just a wasted thing, and I don't think that's what's intended here. Hmm. Uh, you know what, Brian? I'm just going to take one more peek at that uh, Scion book and see if they give any better 
direction uh, for it here. Uh, let's see here. That's using it. Let's see here, basic procedure. All right, let's see here. If you don't succeed, what I'll do is I'll just bump your telepathy by one. Because it would be, it's to get nothing out of it is, is not, that's more, uh, um, more uh, severe than I think what they're, the, the game intends. Yeah, I didn't realize it was a chance at a chance with a penalty. Yeah. Okay, so there are certain careers here where you, you, yeah, you automatically get it. You know what, Brian, I'm just going to give you telekinesis. Uh, and you'll get that at, um, at zero. Kinesis. Because you did roll quite well anyway, so, and you're going to at zero. Okay, so now we're going to roll for uh, survival. So as an adept, you automatically succeed because you, you know, you uh, you don't need to roll that. So, um why don't you roll 2d6 for me and let's see what event happens that year. All right. I uh, got me a four. A four? So, so choose, choose one of these skills, reflecting your time spent mastering mind and body. Gain one of either athletics at one, stealth one, survival one, or art one. I'm looking on page 205. I'm going to go with, uh, let's go with stealth. Stealth? Okay, let me go to your skills here. I'm going to bump your stealth up by one. Nice. Okay. Um, now let's roll for advancement. So go ahead and roll your uh, education. You need to roll an eight or higher. And this is to bump, uh, to go up to uh, an initiate. Okay. But I got a plus two modifier, so that makes it sort of less. Is that how it works? Say again. So That's because right, I yeah, like the the result you roll. Nice, well done. Okay, that means you are now a rank one. Uh, uh, adept, which means you get uh, uh, science with a specialty in. Um, Psionicology. I gotta run to the washroom very quickly here, uh, but mm -hmm. uh, I want you to consider what your uh, next uh, career is gonna be. Are you gonna carry on in Scion or are you gonna try and go to a different career? Just remember, when you leave a career, you cannot go back to it. Okay. Psionicology at level one. Oops, level one. There you go. Okay, I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. So I was, I was thinking, actually, just when I stepped away, um, so to explain why your character trained in stealth, Brent, I'm thinking that maybe the the like psionic academy that you're training with is probably secretive. Like it's probably a hidden place, and and like you, you know, um, the stealth reflects your character learning how to you know 
stay away from the authorities and keep hidden from the authorities and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, no, that that sounds good because the way I see it, he he went, he knew he was psychic. He went looking for training, failed, wandered for years, still couldn't find anything, and then someone found him. Yeah, and the reason he couldn't find them because it's not legit to be a psychic and they're difficult to find and part of his training is to not be found love it yeah no i totally buy that okay so i should not roll on service skills and or adept because i'll have a huge penalty to confirming those results if they uh, turn out to be psychic correct say again well so okay, here's the thing hold on you actually uh, i think in order to ch if you're going to change the um the assignments, I think you need to make a qualification roll again. Okay, so I keep rolling on service skill then? Yes, yeah, so you may change to be on focusing on another aspect of their existing career by changing assignments. Yeah, and that would actually, and your penalty would still apply. So because you've got two different careers, that would be a minus two dice modifier to it. Okay, so I want to. I guess then I'll stick with service skills because it'll be a penalty for changing out of it. Well, yeah, like if you want to stick with, um, if you're going to stick, do another uh, pass through Scion uh, and the assignment of uh, Adept. Yeah. Spend more time in the in the academy. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Okay, but yeah, I'm like, w within that, the, I can either roll. I can you know, one of my options is that you know is the Adept path or the service skill path but i'm thinking that or, uh, or personal development or advanced education right and i'm, I'm thinking right. the service skills if i'm correct in the depth they lead they have the possibility of other psychic abilities but i to confirm those i have a huge penalty right or are you just going to auto confirm no i you, you would have a, a, a further penalty right okay so i should avoid those yeah one thing to bear in mind too is that um, often a, a well-rounded character is like you're going to end up. You'll see at the very end of this, you're going to get a bunch of other like a bunch of other skills that you'll be able to pick right away. Uh, but to make sure that you've got a character who is capable of playing in the kind of campaign we're going to play. Um, but um, but yeah, it, one of the interesting things with these these types of character generation systems is you end up with much more well-rounded characters uh, by going through this process than you would if you you know got to pick everything. All right. Um, I will go with personal development then. Oh, interesting. Trying to boost your attributes. So give me a D6 roll, please. Interesting. Well, that's not what I was hoping for, but Where's see how it plays out. I got a three. A three is plus one strength. Actually, that, that's not bad. You're, I don't think, oh, you're still suffering a dice modifier. <laughs> So, so you don't you don't got a penalty anymore. No, you still you still do, but you you were doing some physical development. That's interesting. Um, okay, so let's roll for well, no survival. You automatically survive. So let's roll on events. Give me a two d six roll. Let's see what your event is. Uh, six. A six is you make an unexpected connection outside your normal circles. You gain a contact. Cool. Okay. Now let's roll for advancement. Uh, you're going to roll education. And you need an eight or higher to advance. Okay. Nice. Good job. Okay, so you're ranked two. No additional benefits yet, but um, you're making your way up towards Acolyte. Ooh, Ooh okay. your next bonus, if you get another advancement branch, your next bonus is any talent skill at one, which would allow you, you can either bump up your uh, telepathy or your telekinesis, or you could roll for a new, uh, try and acquire a new thing. Okay, cool. Well, let's see if I can keep going. Okay, so you're going to carry on. So now your character is currently, let's see here, those 22, 26, 30, you're currently 34 years old. Uh, you're going to go for another, uh, another pass. Your, just so you know where, where aging starts kicking in is, I believe, at 38. We were just bitching about that beforehand. Um, after, once you hit 34, at the end of their fourth uh, career term. So we now get to roll for aging for you. 
So, uh, so I've, here. I've had three, right? I've had, Oh, the failed one counts. So I've got drifter as one and then two nope, rounds. You, of cycle. University is one. Oh, okay. University cook took you four years. So university drifter scion scion, which brings it to 34. So you're 34 when you get out of that. What I need you to do before me, Brent, is uh, roll 2d6 minus 4. Seven. Seven. Okay, so you're fine. No effect from aging. So what do you want to do next? You Watch my stress. strength go away. <laughs> <laughs> So this might be uh, interesting. You know, you know what? Like, if you don't transition towards some kind of smuggling thing at some point, Brent, um, your character may have to do that in game. Okay. No, I was I was trying to get to that next adept thing, but I might. I don't know if I have enough career pass, right? Well, you, you just you'll run out of. I mean, I'll be like so, sixty. Yeah, like that's yeah. You, you don't want. Okay, so in terms of aging, like Jeff's character is forty eight years old, uh, and he's still perfectly capable. Like, there's no. You know, it, uh, and Steve's character cashed out. No, no, sorry. Uh, Jeff's character is 46. Uh, Steve's character is 38. Okay, and currently I'm 34, right? That's right, yeah. You'll be 38. So if I do, if I go for the fourth term in here to see if I can uh, get that other ability, that brings me to 38. Fifth, fifth term. Fifth. Oh, you mean fourth term as a sign? Uh, well, this right. will only be your third term as a sign. Right. So I need to get that other benefit. I need four terms as a psionic. And nope. then to get the smuggler, I need one as that. Three terms, Brent. Three. Mm -hmm. you, you've only done two terms as a scion so far. Right. No, I, I understand. I'm just I'm trying to figure out if I wanted that ability as a psychic, plus I wanted to uh, spend some time as a smuggler or something like that. How yeah. old would my guy be? Yeah, so I mean, you can easily do uh, another, you know, three uh, paths. Like there's the thing is that they, this game doesn't you you pay a physical toll uh, from from aging just because you know that's what happens. But you also get the benefit of you get more skills, you get more opportunities to to learn more things. You also get more uh, benefits. Okay, so yeah, I'd, so I really only need two more, right? Because I need one more to get the third level as alkaloid. You know, one thing I say, so this this um, game really sort of supports, it's like the antithesis of like CW casting. You don't want to have a bunch of young, pretty people as the, you know, your crew, because they're all going to suck at their jobs. <laughs> Having people with life experience who have done some stuff is, there. there is a definite benefit to that. Yeah, but that's movie sci-fi. It's easy. You have the one skill that's called science, and it covers anything science-y. No, no, but I mean, you think of uh, like Firefly or, you know, I mean, Firefly's got a bunch of young, pretty people on it. I suppose that's a bad example, but. Well, um, a lot of sci-fi shows, they only have, you know, like that one science thing and the guy who's good at science, it covers, you know. Well, you're garbage at science. So that's certainly not going to be your, your you know. forte. So what, Well, what and want... this actually has science skills as opposed to, you know, the science skill that covers everything from like, you know, Fixing a yeah. bike to Listen, well, let's get back on topic here. Okay, uh, sorry. What do you want to um do you want to do another career as scion or do you want to try and change careers? Uh, another career as scion. The career as scion, okay. So then um which table do you want to roll on? Personal development, uh service, advanced education, or add Let's go with uh personal development again. Okay. Go ahead and roll one d6. What's your roll? I got me a five. Five. So your endurance goes up by one. Okay. Uh, and then go ahead and roll for. So I know so you automatically survive. So give me two d six for your event. Let's see what happened to you during this period. Uh, I got me an eight. Eight. You achieve a new level of psionic strength. Increase your psi by one. It's pretty mm -hmm. badass. Oh, you're so close to getting a plus two. Okay. Um, now let's roll for advancement. Let's see if you get that uh, that acolyte position. Now, the other thing I should say too. Oh, look at that! Fucking not twenty or not twelve. That's awesome. 
Okay, so yes, you do. You are now an acolyte. What um, what talent do you want to, or what skill do you want to go up? What does awareness do? Okay, this time, if you roll for it, you're stuck with the results. Okay. Oh, so that doesn't, so that's only going to give me the, it's not going to actually. Um... You will not give you the last one because you had to spend that roll uh, and you were stuck with what you, you know, what, with what you got. I, I wanted to, to fudge it. I'm not going to fudge this one. This isn't. Oh, okay. I thought that ability might just let me get a rank in something without having to roll. Nope. nope. Um, okay. So I can take a skill or a rank in something I already have? Yeah, you can get um, your telepathy uh, or your telekinesis can go up by one. Or you can make a roll to try and learn another talent. But it's a minus six right now. So that would be difficult. Yeah. It actually would be impossible. I think, unless it was because you already know telepathy. Yeah, so uh, your telekinesis or your telepathy, which, which do you think you're stronger with? Uh, I'll be a stronger telepath. Telepath, you got it. Okay, so plus one. All right. Um, now let's roll for aging. Uh, give me a two d six minus uh, five. Four. Four. Okay, you're fine. Wait, did you roll a four, or does it is did you roll nine and you subtract a five? I rolled. I rolled a five and a four, and just. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Five. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Cool. So, um, you want to do another career or another pass? Uh, yes, and I will switch careers. I've had enough okay. of the order, and I want to branch out. So before we do that, let's roll for your benefits then. Uh, because you're, you're as you're leaving there, and let me see here. Your benefits, because you reach rank three, you get two extra benefits rolls, and you serve one, two, three full terms, which means you get five benefits rolls, which is great. Um... Nice. Okay. So uh, for those five, each of those you get to pick to roll on either the cash or on the benefits thing. You just roll 1d6. Uh, uh, which which do you want for your first benefits roll? What do you want to roll? Okay. So the cash. Oh, I see on the top of the first page. Yeah. For mustering out benefits. So ship shares would be like partial ownership? That's right. Yeah. It's partial ownership of a, of a ship. All right. Well, um, I don't know, let's try uh, the benefits. Okay. Give me a D6 roll. Tell me what you roll. What'd you roll? I rolled a one. I get a gun. You get a gun. Nice. Okay. Uh, next, do you want to roll benefits or cash? And I've got five rolls in total? You got five rolls in total. Yeah, that's right. All right. Well, let's try benefits one more time. See if I okay. can get something that's not a gun. Well, again. Okay. Um, I have a combat implant. Okay. Do I don't have... Okay. Um... Okay. Roll again. What do you want to do? Uh, cash or benefits? I'm going to go for cash. I, uh, the, the two benefits I got are not sort of like a opposites of how the character is going till this point. No. Well, I mean, no, it's a change in, uh, in life. Combat implant means you can get augmentations with a, up to 50,000 credits in TL12. Uh, some of those augmentations man, can include intellect or education boosts. So, okay. You know, um, all right. So, uh, which you're rolling on cash now? Go ahead and make your roll. I got a four, so that's 4,000 4, credits. credits. Yeah. Okay. And uh, do you want to roll the next one on? You got two more cash or benefits? Let's go. I guess I don't even know how much this represents, so I don't know if that's. Significant or not, four thousand. Yeah, it depends. I mean, what you're trying to buy. Uh, four thousand is uh, four thousand. I don't think could even buy you uh, passage uh, from one parsec to another. Okay, so I will roll on cash again. Yeah. Here's the thing, Brett. You can only spend five thousand credits at the start of the game. Then you have to the rest of it. You have to spend in game. Okay. Okay. Uh, next roll. Oh, sorry, you're going on cash again. Yeah, I'll go one more on cash. Okay. See what you got. Uh, and I got me another four. Of course, you get another 4,000 credits. Um, and is the last one going to benefits then? Yes. Okay, go ahead and make a roll. Okay, uh, I got a six again, so I got... Another combat implant, wow. You got some uh, cybernetics, that's weird. 
Cool. Yeah. Okay. What is TAS membership, by the way? T TAS is the Traveler Aid Society. It's effectively uh, like, yeah, it's it's pretty fucking cool. That's what, uh, that would have been a cool one to get. Uh, yeah. But I will be the combat telepath with no combat skills. Well, the um, well, you no. Know, here's the thing: you don't have them yet. Life is still young. Um, okay. So the augments. So for instance, for fifty grand, Brent, uh, you could get like plus one dex, plus one intellect, uh, plus one strength, plus one armor. And that's each of those you get to pick. So that's pretty. Okay, yeah, let's do the last career and then. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, you don't have to spend your, your stuff just yet. I'm just I'm just telling you that they're like what's okay. um what's sort of available there. Okay, so um what's the next career you want to try and get into? Uh where is the career? Listed? Which page is the career list? Nineteen. What does advanced do? Oh, that's advancement. Never mind. Yeah, I that's how to get. You know, let me just double check. I think I've actually got. You do want to go full on. Uh, smuggler, smuggler. I've actually got a smuggler career. Where is it here? Like I said, or uh, uh, I could go intelligence or agent, and that's when I was approached by. Um, yeah, uh, okay, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Zendani. You want to try that? Yeah, hang on. Let me just uh, tell you what is Aspire, Saboteur. And then I could, in my, and we could work out that why I'm not a smuggler. I'm an undercover. My cover is a smuggler. Yep. I have astrogation, right? So, sort of, I just, I would need to pick up a piloting skill somehow. Oh, you know what, Brent? I want to go back uh, to the Drifter. Go to the Drifter page again. I think I fucked something up. Okay, sorry. What uh, Drifter was? Drifter's what? On page twenty-six. Okay. Okay, so um, you uh, what do you call it? You also are entitled to a uh, a role on this one because it was your first. So you can t pick uh, personal development, service skills, or wanderer to roll on. Which would you like? Uh, let's we have for service skills. Um. Well, let's. Uh... Let's see what personal development has for me then. Okay. Go ahead and roll 1d6. Awesome. Uh, I got a one again, so... so plus I... one strength. Actually, you know, Brian, that's not bad because I think you're... you're it's like the low L attribute. Like, I'll just be weak in that one. And instead of, like, sort of, like, being strong in one, I keep boosting the lowest one. Uh, your dice modifier should be as oh your dice modifier is a zero in it now though, Brent. So that's actually all right. Something so it, you've been toughened up over the course of your life. That's good. Um, okay, so sorry. Now go ahead and uh, go back to picking what your your next career is going to be. Okay, so let's maybe let's go with agent then, and then okay. So let's see if you can qualify. To qualify for an agent is a. Six plus, and it's a minus one dice modifier for each previous career. You've had two oh, previous so careers, so it's minus two. So you need an, uh, effectively, you need, yeah, eight or higher result. So go ahead and roll on um, intellect. Oh, oh shoot. So shoot, six shoot. Plus one is seven, and I need an eight. No, no, that's it includes the, the bonus already. You can see if you hover over it, it'll show you that you rolled a five, actually. Oh. And the plus one, yeah, your modifier is already included in there. Okay, so what this means, Brent, is, again, you find yourself in the position where you can become a drifter for a term, or you can be drafted. Fuck it, let's... <coughs> I got drafted. No one says by whom, so... Uh... Okay, so give, uh, go ahead and give me a D6 roll. Let's see who drafted you. I got me a two. 
two. You're drafted into the army. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, so um, <laughs> so we. <laughs> Which page is the draft on? Uh, draft is well. You've already rolled uh, the results, so you don't need to know that. It's uh, it is on eighteen, but go to twenty-two. This is the one you need to worry about. Okay. So you're going to be in either support. Uh, which is you're an engineer, a cook, or some other kind of role behind the front lines. You're in infantry, uh, or you're in cavalry, so you're part of a gunship or a tank. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, oh man, that's funny. All right. Uh... So what do you think he went into? Is that fucking 38 years old? You're drafted. Clearly into the army, that. nonetheless. Yeah. Uh, blank, blank. Um, Which do you think? I'm trying to figure out how I make this guy into a fucking uh, spy or um, uh, intelligence operative. And I can't. <laughs> um... There's nothing. Okay, well, since we're going with the weird, let's go with infantry. Yeah, okay. Because what could have happened, Brett, is maybe he, like, this could have been some kind of, like, uh, uh, penalty thing. Like, maybe you, you, um, you know, you were trying to, to uh, get in touch with uh, the, the uh, Zodani or whatnot, and you end up getting press ganged into some kind of local military. Um, so... Well, what you get to do, Brian, is pick one of the service skills that's listed there, and you get that at a zero, and then you'll get a chance to make a roll on. Uh, you're not, you're not an officer. Hold on, when you get to roll. Yeah, your your social is too low. If you get a social of nine or higher, you could make a, a roll for commission right away, but you're you're just not. You don't have the connections. So uh, which of those things do you want at a zero, Brent? Uh, drive or vac suit, uh, athletics, gun combat, recon, melee, or heavy weapons? I think you've got some of those already, though. I don't think I have gun combat, and since I've got a gun, well, maybe we'll go with that then. Okay, so you got your basic training in gun combat. Here we go. That training. All right. Uh, and then which of the tables do you want to roll on? Advanced education, service skills, personal development, or infantry? <laughs> I'm the, the, blanking at which of them would be actually useful. Um, you know, awesome, one of the things that bizarre. I think we can take away from this is that our intent to try and make this character be one thing um, has not worked out at all. No, so. I, I've tried. I'm like, okay, <laughs> this is how this will lead. And I'm like, no, nope. rather than comparing him to who he's going to be, let's talk about who he is then. Okay. Um, so this is a guy who you do have, because I mean, the thing is, in play, we could still have this guy moving towards that. Uh, like, you've got a contact that you made when you were an adept. Um, I'm happy to have that be your, like a Zodani uh, contact. So they're trying to get you to move yourself into this position, and, and it'll be a matter of you doing that in play. Right. Okay. Uh... What's the difference between recon and stealth? Or is it sort of similar? Uh, recon is is like reconnoitering. You use that that skill to um, to like scout out uh, camps and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Scout out dangers, spot threats, unusual objects, uh, or out of place people. Whereas stealth is uh, staying unseen, unheard, unnoticed. Oh, okay. Uh, I see. So recon okay. is kind of like what uh, perception is used for in a lot of other games. Okay. Fuck. Uh, Which do you want to roll on? It's uh, a random result anyway, so it'll suffer over it too badly. Yeah, I know. I'm just looking like what has like I'm like I'm like they both have I'm looking at uh, service skills and infantry, and they both end up with heavy weapons, which would just be plain bizarre. Um, I think they're all the same, really. Uh, well. Fuck it. Let's go with service skill, I guess. Maybe I'll get back suit or okay. something. Go ahead and give it a roll D6. 
What'd you get? I got a rank in melee. Melee, nice. Okay, so that means you get to pick a uh, specialty, actually, too. Um, uh, it could be unarmed or blades. Or I can't remember what the other one is. Um, there is a pretty fucking badass uh, blade you can get in this called a static blade. Which is kind of like a side, like uh, advanced version of like a vibro blade. Both uh, Steve's character and Jeff's character are cruising around with one right now. Uh, and actually, there's a pretty badass side blade you can get as well, too. Okay, sure. We'll go with that then. Okay. Let's get that one. Okay. Uh, so just you know, too, Brent, the way that uh, special... Uh, uh, specialties work in this is just uh, you you will have a zero in everything relating to melee other than blades okay okay so now let's roll for you're in the infantry Whew, thank god you don't have that strength penalty anymore let's see if you survive give me a strength check please you need a six or higher Yes, yeah. nice, awesome. Okay, cool. So roll on events. Give me 2d6. Okay. Nine. Nine is surrounded and outnumbered by the enemy. You hold out until relief arrives. You gain plus two to your next advancement check. Whoa, which means, Brent, you know what? I think you, you've got a four or higher, which means you auto-succeed on your advancement. So congratulations. Um... You are now a uh, lance corporal, and because you're you've gone from zero to one, you gain a gun combat at one and recon at one. Oh, yes, your recon's a one now, and gun combat can mean uh, energy weapons or slugs. Uh, no idea about what would be your. Uh, I'm energy sure that you're sort of. I'm picturing you're in the Trojan Regis right now, uh, which means that slugs are probably going to be uh, more likely what you're going to be able to get, gain access to. Okay, we'll go with that then. All right, so you got... Wow, that's badass. And now, um, yeah, so you got your advancement. You got uh, a pretty heroic kind of stand there, uh, rank one in the military. Uh, you're 42. Um, let's make a quick aging check, and then you can make a decision whether you want to try and do another career, carry on in the army, or, or what. So you're going to roll 2d6 minus uh, 6. 2d6 minus 6. Yes, please. I've got a whopping 2. I will be nice. the first character who does something. Fuck yes. That's awesome. So yeah, no no aging penalties. As long oh, as you I need to like get a one or lower. No, you got you got to get a roll below uh, zero to oh, start okay. having penalties. I figured I'd be getting a penalty already. No, you're you're aging like fine wine. Um, well, you know okay. I I'm pretty good. I spend a lot of time dodging overwhelming odds and. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, now you can actually uh, so if you continue on in the in the army, uh, you could potentially role for a uh, commission as well commission is a, a social role of eight or higher so it's not necessarily a super easy role to make didn't uh, i get a plus two to something that was plus two to your advancement role that's why you got the auto success on it okay so you got your promotion to lance corporal because of this crazy last stand you made when you know you, you thought like why the fuck am i in here and maybe your psychic powers played into that too right you know Okay, so what do you want to do? Is is this character finished now, or do you want to go one more, uh, one more term in either like an army or try something different? I don't know. <laughs> I... Then I end up if I try something different, there's a good chance I'll end up as a drifter, right? Uh... Not necessarily. Not all of the uh, careers necessarily have the like minus one for each previous career. If you see an army, I mean like. You don't get anything really if you get another. Um, there's, there's no specific uh, benefit uh, if you become a um, a corporal, like your next rank up. 
you got a commission though, you would automatically get a leadership uh, one uh, because you'd be a lieutenant. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. What do you think? What does he want to do? What does what does uh, Demetrius want to do? Like, this was not his plan to end up in the in the army after spending you know uh, twelve years you know in a, a secret psychic academy. But where do you see him going next? I don't know. He might be done. Like life just has not turned out. He, you know, after university, everything's ever been downhill. Yeah. Well, uh, not necessarily. I mean, his his three uh, his twelve years with. Uh, the Sonic Academy was was quite. Uh, yeah, I mean, he, it was some bumps getting there, and then he was drafted uh, as a result of it. Okay, so let's. If he's done with the army, then he gets to make a roll for his uh, mustering out. He's been in there. So for I'm forty two right now. Uh, forty two years old. That's right. And you have um, because you reach rank one, you get an extra benefit. So you get to roll two benefits on army. Okay, hang on. I'm just going to check the careers to see if there's something that fill them out or maybe move them slightly into the... Drifter's got some good, you know, stealthy whatever shit too. Or I wonder if he's just done. What if we went... What's a citizen colonist like? What page is that? Hang on, 24. What if he's just, I'm done. Life didn't work out. I'm just going to give up and find a place and live <laughs> that, okay so that's uh, education is it's an education five plus to qualify with a minus one uh for each career and you've got one two three previous careers so that would mean it's an eight or higher but with your education bonus you need to roll six or higher to qualify where which which uh ones have the where does it show which where do they have a penalty um well on each of the the um pages top left oh, okay so it's not in the summary table you know, uh, it's on. So I'm on the citizen was on page 24. Okay. Drifter is really the only one that you don't get. Uh, actually, you could go rogue, Brent. I'm a thief. Um. Uh, you could become a merchant. I mean, the the it becomes the more difficult. The more sort of career hopping you do, the more difficult it is to, you know, uh, later in life to hop into those things. But citizen is not a, not a terrible chance of, of doing it. You just need a six or uh, uh, basically you need to roll six or higher to qualify. Yeah. So it's either I don't know either one more term in the army uh, or just get out and or citizen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is it? What, is, what feels right for Demetrius? What says uh, he? You know, obviously he didn't want to necessarily be in the army, but uh, he, he, he did, did do, succeed well. He, yeah, did, he did really well. good. He became a military hero, so that right. might be impetus to stay in for a bit. Yeah. Plus, or, it's probably looking at his career to date. Like it's it's probably the the most successful contact with other people that he's had that aren't just you know uh, a part of a secret society. Is his he was betrayed by someone when he was a drifter or wanderer, um, who's now his uh, enemy or rival. Uh, and then he was, you know, he made some contacts while he was a scion, but that's living separate and apart from, you know, normal, quote unquote, normal society. And then in the army, he suddenly found, you know, uh, the people respected him and he did quite well. Yeah, actually, yeah, you might, you might have actually made friends for the first time since like university. Yeah, you know, other than being, you know, yeah, uh, wandering and betrayed, and then having the secret organization fall apart. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? All right, sure, we'll do one last career in the army and see. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so um, and that which, would put me at forty six. Uh, you'll be forty six when you're done this this uh, pass. Yeah. Okay, so uh, which table do you want to roll on? Uh, personal, well, first off, let's roll for commission. So you need to roll an eight or higher to get commissioned. On what kind of test? Uh, social, sorry. <coughs> <coughs> There's no penalty for failing this. It just means that you're not commissioned as an officer. Yes, nice. Okay, so your commission is an officer, badass. 
which means you automatically will get leadership at one. One sec here. Uh, that's fucking cool. Let's see wrong thing. Okay, so that means also that, uh, hey, go down. Come on, wrong way. There we go. So, um, it, you know what? How about, what if he came, instead of, you know, being drafted as a negative thing, what if uh, he came, uh, he was recruited by the Zandoni and he was in sort of like uh, an affiliated, either their military. No, I, I, don't, I don't want you to have any meaningful contact with the Zodani uh, okay. to start. Yeah, I want everything. I want all of you guys to have meaningful uh, connections with the Trojan Reaches themselves. Okay. Uh, so this is the um, you, you, like there still is uh, Third Imperium space that's there. So you don't doesn't necessarily mean you have to be like from in in the middle of nowhere. Uh, but uh, I, I don't want yeah the, the your contact with the Zodani is going to be kind of like it would be akin to like um, you know uh, Soviet agents reaching out to people in the west in like the 60s okay where you're just like you've heard of and you are aware of the zodani but they're not really uh they're not a presence and they certainly don't, like, they don't have a physical presence in the trojan regions either uh they just like anywhere that potentially could cause problems for the third imperium they will have agents uh so but what, what else is there another way to uh, if uh Setting aside the the uh, Zodani uh, contact, is there another way to take that same idea you had? Well, the other thing is, I could just be. We could have gone with the the drifter. Uh, sorry, the drafted, and then um, from drafted, just have uh, things turn around, and he just ex he really excelled at, you know, despite being like the bookish guy, he was stuffed in the army and excelled really well at it. Yeah, and you know what, Brent? Like, if, if it's in the Trojan Reaches, it could have. Uh, like, let's see what happens during your your officer thing. Let's see what happens in, in either the mishaps or the events. Okay. Um, which do you want to roll on though? Now you have actually even more options. You can roll on infantry, personal development, service skills, advanced education, or officer. I'm gonna roll on the officer. See what that. Nice. Means. Okay, go ahead and roll one d six. Which roll? I got myself a diplomat. Diplomat, interesting. Okay. Okay, so you got one level in diplomat. And that's like uh like full on it's, it's not like you know diplomacy. It's like uh it well, it's not diplomacy in the sense that it's like normal interaction. Uh this is something that is specifically related to like dealing with nobility, high class officials, stuff like that. So your guy knows his way around uh, something like that. Let's roll for advancement now. Education six or higher. Let's go ahead and roll your education. Because mm -hmm. if you can get another advancement here, uh, that means that you'll have three, which means you'll get two extra benefits. Yes, nice. Okay, so you're now rank. Uh, there's no change in your. Oh, you are. You're a captain. Ooh, it's fucking cool. Okay, so you became an yeah, officer. Let's see if that's army. In. Became a captain, and let's roll on your event as well. Oh, we didn't roll survival. Shit, I forgot to do that. Let's roll survival first. Okay, what do I need for survival? Uh, you need strength of six or higher. All right. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Otherwise, you won't be able to advance. Well, that would suck. That uh, would suck. I'll get demoted. Hey, yes! Nice. I made it. Awesome, awesome. Okay, cool. So then you did. You are a captain. Uh, and uh, go ahead and roll 2d6 and tell me what you roll. All right. Let's try and roll a 7. It'll be interesting then. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> um... What's Would you, uh, uh, yeah, a five, five, okay. a special assignment, a special assignment, nice, which means you gain a plus one dice modifier on any one benefit roll. That is pretty cool, which means you're going to hit that sweet, sweet seven on the uh, benefits. 
Okay, and so that is uh, is pretty good. So you're 46 right now. You're a captain in um, some kind of army. We'll figure out what what army that is. Are you done here, or are you gonna go yes, to 50? Yes, I think I'm done. Done. Well, let's roll for your aging first. Let's see how how well you've aged like five. So you have seven. So uh, 2d6 minus seven, please. Positive. Um, oh, no, maybe I got a seven on the dot. Which is zero, no aging modifiers. Oh, no, no, reduce one physical characteristic by one. So you want to reduce your, you know what, your... Endurance, I guess, because there will be a yeah. penalty, right? The others yeah. would give me a penalty. That's right. Yep, absolutely. Okay, so it puts you at 46. Are you done or are you going to push to 50? No, I think I'm good. If you're at 50, you'd be the oldest character in the game so far. <laughs> If I keep going, I could be the geriatric character. In the exactly. Game. Well, also, I mean, you could try and take the anagathics. Anagathics are the things that extend your your life, and and uh, I mean, they cost a shit ton. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I won't have the starting credits, but uh... <laughs> okay. So are you? Uh, so if you're mustering out them, uh, then you get uh, right. You have four rolls on uh, of benefits on army, and one of those gets plus one. Okay, uh, I guess cash doesn't really matter because I can't spend it, correct? Well, you can spend it in-game. Uh, it's just that you can't spend it necessarily to start. Okay, so I've got four rolls. Currently, you're sitting on 8,000 credits. Okay. So uh, first off, now, do you want us to want to make the plus one roll for, at the start, or do you want to save that for your last roll? And I've got how many rolls you were saying? Four rolls. Four. Um. Well, let's go with a benefit, and I'll add plus one, and see if I can get that extra social. Okay. So go ahead and roll one d six. It'd be great if you get another combat implant. <laughs> No, I would have, but I got plus one to it, so it gave me an int uh, plus one. Int plus one, okay. Because one plus one plus two. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been hilarious if I got three combat. <laughs> That's crazy, cyborg. <laughs> like, why am I the cyborg guy? Okay. If it wasn't for that modifier, it totally would have, too. Uh, okay, so you get uh, three more rolls. Do you want to roll the next one on cash or on benefits? I'll go for benefits again. Go ahead and roll. I've got myself some armor. Nice. That's uh, 10,000 uh, 10, credits worth of armor. Okay. And uh, there's a bunch of sweet, sweet modifiers you can add to that as well. Uh, next one, is it going to be in uh, on benefits or on cash? Okay, I've got two left, so I will... Um... Ooh. I will go for uh, benefits again, and I'll do the last one on cash. Okay, so go ahead and roll your benefits roll. <laughs> nice. Okay. What'd you get? So I've got a six. Do I want to bump my endurance back up to eight, or do I want another? Another um, combat implant. Yeah. What do you think? I'm gonna go with the, the endurance. Not gonna make a difference one way or another. Let's go with the full cyborg. Love it. I don't. This is so not how I when we. Uh, yeah, this is not how I anticipate the character. No, this is you know what I should have known from the other two things too. Like this is the, but it's it's an interesting character, though, right? Oh yeah, I somehow became um, like I'm not sort of like this. I've got to figure out how to work the psychics into it. I could have been a pure military character this way. Yeah, well, it's, and that's like, that's the cool thing with this. Like Steve's character was going to be like the medic on board, and then he ended up with his career in the navy. You know, and it's just, it's it's really cool seeing how the characters flush out that way. Okay, so last roll, you said you were going to roll on cash. Uh, go ahead yep. and roll. Yay, another six. So Nice, 20,000 credits. That's a lot. Sweet. So you're starting with uh, 28,000 credits. Now, I don't think you get a pension because you didn't spend enough time in any one career. Uh, let me double check that. Yeah, at least five terms in a career in order to qualify for a pension. So you're no pension, but that, that's okay. Um, 
You've already rolled your aging, so we don't need to worry about that. Uh, you... Oh, we've already included that. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, that's very... Okay, the last thing we got to do, Brent, is let me think here. So we were hoping to sort of put this character as like a smuggler. Do you think he's more of a criminal type, more of a traitor type? I don't... Or, he, he, came out nothing like that well this is where we fit him into the uh we, we pick the sort of lens he's going to fit in and then we're going to uh, bump up his skills to make sure he's got the skills he needs to fit that lens like normally what you would do is after we make characters we pick what kind of group you're going to be uh and uh like for instance for steve and jeff's characters they are travelers they're just general sort of you know all around travelers so what we do is we look at i'm looking at the skill packages on on uh, 48 uh, and then what we did is took turns where they each picked one skill back and forth until they took all of them. So what I'm going to do for you is you will just take half of the skills in one of these packages. That'll give you a, the equivalent. But I want to make sure it fits the package that fits what your character is doing. What do you see him doing now? He's This is going to pick up about you know three to six months after he uh, left the military, left the army. Um, if we want to play up the Zodani connection again too, I think you've had this Zodani connection the whole time along, and now you've got yourself some experience and some, you know, uh, it, with the military. Um, do you see yourself uh, like? Is he going to do what we what we intended? Where he's going to become like a smuggler type thing? In which case, you're going to have to hire people who are, you know, who have the skills you need to be able to do that kind of job. Uh, or, or we take like the trader thing, and then you just pick thing. Like, you've already got diplomat. The skills that you need in order to do like trading type stuff, Brent, uh -huh. are uh, broker, uh, streetwise, and. And I think I already have streetwise at zero. Is it? Uh, you might actually have it at a, at a one. It's at least at a zero. Yeah, you got it at a zero. Uh, so, like trader. Broker is a really useful one because broker is what you use to find a um, someone to be able to like sell your wares from or buy your wares from. Streetwise is what you use for sketchy shit. But like, what do you? Let's not uh, try and pigeonhole this guy because now we've seen this guy go through his life. What do you think he's doing? There? Like, how is he connected to the Zodani? Is he trying to put together a mercenary company? Is he? Uh, you know, See, I was uh, thinking that it would fit, but then at the same time, I don't know if it would fit because if the military was, you know, the best thing to happen in his life, would he just abandon that just to, you know, form a private version? Like, you know, well, we know he's left uh, because he has he has cashed out, so he's he's not part of that military anymore. Right, but would he have cashed out just to go form his own military unit, or would he have done something different? I don't know. Well, how about this? Why did uh, Demetrius uh, seek out the psychic training in the first place? Because he had them um, just growing up. He 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 knew he was he was a bit of a telepath, and he wanted to expand on that. It sounded really cool, especially as a teenager and university student. You know, like. He was something special. He could do things, but he didn't really know how to develop it. Okay. So, so that's what he spent most of his life doing until he found the military. And then he <laughs> became a combat cyborg who survived a major battle and became an officer. And then, yeah, I don't know. So, why, a, okay, so we know he left the, uh, like that, that academy or, or whatever it is, or the, the temple or the monastery or, or the cell. Uh, we know he left to try and become, you know, a sort of uh, uh, an agent for, was it an agent for the Zodani or was it an agent for something else? Like, was he just trying to, was he going to specifically try and serve with someone and then things went poorly and he became part of this military? Because I think that's a pretty seminal event in his life when he left the, I mean, he left the, the, sound of school to go and do something but it just didn't work out the way he planned 
so there's there's a few ways we could we could work it. I mean, he could that psionic school was found out by the authorities, and he was drafted as punishment. Okay. Or um, they kicked him out for trying to contact Zodani, or for having been caught with a Zodani contact, or yeah, that could work. Because if he, um, he yeah, let's go kicked- that. So he he developed a Zodani contact. Say why why he was uh, the drifter, but it didn't pan out in terms of training. No, no the contact was while he was at the school. Okay, so what if what if okay the contact reached out to him at while he was at school, and then he got the boot from it. Is yeah, your- then he got kicked out of the school, and one of the head of masters or you know one of the authority figures in the school uh, pulled some strings to make him disappear into the army. What about this, Brent? Is your so that character that we were thinking of when we first were talking about this character, that that like, you know, smuggler who's an agent for the Zodani and whatever else, what if that's your rival? What if it's an arrival um, telepath who's the one who betrayed you way back when you were a drifter? That's why your like life went so shitty during that period. And then you've managed to find your way to the Sound Academy. You know, uh, in the second term of that is when you made your contact with Zodani. Uh, and that this rival is still causing problems for you. Maybe he's who got me kicked. Maybe he's got me uh, drafted. He pulled strings to have me like pulled yeah, out of the academy and had me drafted against my will. But it actually turned out to be a very positive thing, even though it was intended to be a very negative thing. Absolutely, and that's where you find yourself: is that you're coming out, you still got a contact with his, with his Odani, but there's this other fucking guy who's making you, you know, who takes every opportunity to make your life hell. Uh, and you can't rat him out because he's a psychic as well. So, and now that you're in the Trojan reaches where the your contact has encouraged you to go, um, you guys both are having to work in this area. Same time. So if that's where he finds himself, where like he's got this rival who's out there, rival or enemy who's causing him fucking problems, but he does have a contact who's trying to get, who's encouraged you to come to the reaches to try and, you know, um, to do what? I don't know. You think are you, are you to develop contacts here? Are you to just be a spy here? Um, I don't know. Now that he's been in the military, I don't know if I see him so much as a, a spy. He might have gotten you know more loyalty to the you know the the region. Yeah. Maybe he's just maybe he's just sort of a benign contact who now wants to help you know legitimize psychic abilities. Okay, cool. Yeah, because that would explain why you're in the in the reaches. How are you making your money in the reaches? Are you hiring on as sort of like a you know local as a security guy? On, well, I was uh, thinking. I mean, he is a captain, right? So he could either go uh, travel around as you know, like uh, you know, as like putting together a mercenary unit, okay. or he could be the starship package. He could you could just be traveling, literally traveling around, uh, and sort of like that, you know. Hey, wouldn't it be cool to have my own spaceship? I sort of know how to lead people. I can handle myself. Well, here's one this thing would be a good way your, to get around. And, you know, one like, thing that place your strengths, Brent, is um, your so like the piracy is one of the big issues in uh, the Trojan Reaches because there's no real central authority and there's ton there's two very very lucrative uh, uh, trading arms. There's one between the Oslan Hyrat and the Third Imperium. There's one between the Third Imperium and this place called the Florian League on the uh, uh, Spinward side of the sector. Uh, the ways that that like pirates can't just blow shit you know, ships up and get their stuff. They do need to do boarding actions. So someone with your particular skill set, even though you don't, aren't necessarily able to fix engines or you know uh, fly the ships, you could be a very valuable asset. And the fact right. that you're also psychic could be an, another, and you've got this, you know, decent streetwise. We're well, not super trained in it, but uh, if you've got some streetwise as well too, like you could be a, an asset for them on station as well. Yeah. Uh, so perhaps traveler, mercenary, starship is a bit too much like piloty. Yeah, I don't think so. Like, I think like yeah, mercenary or traveler 
are probably the one of those is the is the the right one for for you. And like in terms of the the campaign itself, what what I sort of foresee in the way you be um you know you would be a guest star here is at least at first uh, you could uh, like when you show up you're you know it's they they're they're going to get to know you and you will be the like you know local hire for the whatever for for you know uh, we need to make a, a trip between here and here and we need you know someone uh, we need some muscle and you could be the guy who's hired on as muscle and then once they know you then there would be other story reasons as you're going on and then if um, if in between, if we find opportunities for you to play Demetrius uh, in general, then we just, you know, we figure out what you, we play him the same way we would anyone else in a sandbox game, which is you start off like when you, the way it'll work, Brent, is your first uh, session, uh, you'll be able to spend uh, on top of the equipment that you start with, like your gun, your armor, and your uh, combat implants, you can spend another 5,000 credits on stuff. But then after that, it's a matter of actually going to buy the stuff. So you're gonna have to figure out how you're gonna how that's gonna work. Here, um, I'm okay. What look at the investigator skill package? Not that he's an investigator per se, but the skills that make up it. Uh, streetwise would be good. So it's stealth and gun combat and yeah. persuade. I think you could like yeah. There's four. There's eight in each of these uh, groups. Uh, so you could pick uh, four of those that you get. Because. I'm looking at, I'm like looking at all the things and of those like persuade would be good. Uh, streetwise would be good. An extra point in gun. Com I think my gun combat is, what is it right now? Let me gun combat's a one, isn't it? Yeah. So if I'm really this military hotshot, I should probably pop that up. Okay. Well, you've also got, I mean, like you, you're, you're not, you're trained in carouse. You've got astrogation. Uh, you're trained in athletics. You train in leadership, which is a plus one trained in mechanics. Like you, you, you've got a, a decent, you're not like, gonna, you know, going to be teaching classes and some of the shit. Uh, your recon is pretty good. So you got like, you're pretty eagle eyed, you know? So, um, yeah, that, that, that absolutely works. What do you, uh, so which of those uh, four skills do you think you'll pick? How many, um, how many four. skill options do I get or points four. in this? Pick four out of there. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, you know what? Gun combats. You are uh, you're forty six, right? Yeah. I think. I think that you are from the same settlement that Steve's character is from. You're eight years older than him, so you wouldn't be one of the older boys in the thing, but like. I think that he knew about you because you were such a fucking all-star in university that he would have been like four years behind you, about 16 or so, you know, when, when you were graduating. So you would have been like the, you know, the apple in your family's eye and then you just fucking disappeared, you know? And then when he meets you again in uh, the reaches, that's where you guys sort of know each other. All right. That work for you? Yeah. That we've, got, we've got some actual connections between your characters then too. So it's not just like you're just some random hire. It's like, holy shit, from so-and-so planet, you know? Okay. Okay, so sorry, which uh, which four skills are you picking, Brent? Um, investigator skill pack? Right, so I'll go with gun combat for one. Okay, so your gun combat is now a two. All right. Uh, okay, my go ahead and pick one. five, Brent. We'll round up. Pick five. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's go with gun combat streetwise. Okay. So streetwise is one more. Yeah. Uh, deception. Nice. Okay, I actually got to learn that. One second here. Deception. Okay. Persuade and stealth. Okay. One. Uh, or is deception to no? I maybe as yours as a psychic, I think he would have developed that, right? Sure. Well, again, you don't like the uh, what this uh, phase of the character creation is is to you know to make this character 
to, to have your specific input into how you want this character to develop. So this is making that dude into that character or closer to that character that we talked about at the outset. You know, the the sort of like, you know, uh, Han Solo but a Jedi character that we talked about in our email. Right. Uh, so sorry, pers- I got persuaded. No, what was the other one? Uh, I. Oh, did you get to take another level on stealth? Yeah. You did gun combat, deception, streetwise, persuade, persuade, deception, and stealth. Uh, and self kid. Okay. Just stealth is up by one. Ooh, stealth is a two then. Nice. All right, cool. Um, okay, cool. So we're not going to do what I want. I want you to have an opportunity to look through the um, the gear in both the core book and in the central supply catalog, uh, so that you can um, you can pick the uh, augmentations and like the armor. Um, one of the things to bear in mind uh, is that when you travel to a new system, there the local law level will tell you sort of what you can bring there. So even though, like, with 10,000 10, credits, you're not going to be able to buy, like, you know, fucking battle dress or, like, crazy power armor or anything like that. But just, you know, um, it's worth bearing in mind that uh, depending, you're going to want to buy stuff that is appropriate to where you're hoping to actually wear the stuff and where you're going you're gonna to bring your character. Right. Um, and how much do I have for the gun? Uh, the gun is 1,000, I believe. 1,000 for the gun. Uh, and then... Uh, and if you want to find that again, Brent, it's in the uh, right after sort of the, like near the end of the character creation session or section. Okay. Uh, it's around page, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> 45 is where I'm looking. Okay. It's just like the armor where it's, it's up to uh, TL 12. But uh, you'll see in the central uh, supply catalog that there's a shit ton of, um, of really cool uh, options you can like make into your armor. So like Jeff's ca- armor has like a built-in computer and some other neat shit. And you can, as long as it it totals that that suit, excuse me, totals ten thousand. I'm fine with you, you know, loading it to the gills with as much shit as you as you can. And five thousand, you'll find you can get a fair amount of pretty cool stuff uh, for that amount of money too. Uh, so pretty cool. Okay, so we're not making your Savage Worlds character <laughs> character tonight. Um, we'll have to do that, uh, hopefully sometime before you take off for your vacation. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so this is, I think the first time that we've gone through, or the first time you've gone through, uh, the traveler, uh, system since we were kids. It's mainly sure ever... similar, uh, yet I think a lot more holistic and, uh, advanced <laughs> than what I remember the old, like say Twilight 2000 or dark conspiracy or old traveler system. I don't think that we necessarily played those properly either. So I think the fact that we didn't run the game properly, and also we thought that anyone past like 24 was super old. Oh, that, that too. <laughs> Why our characters were fucking garbage all the time. Excuse me, I got the hiccups right now. Um, okay, cool. So what we'll do, let me just uh, switch back to the main uh, screen here. Um, get out of here. And close that down. Okay, camera going again. Um, all right. So I think uh, I'm not sharing screens anymore. Okay, so um, that is uh, Captain Demetrius uh, Petru. Uh, so we didn't end up where we uh, set out to go, <laughs> but I think that uh, it, it was nope. it, it was a really interesting. I think he's gonna be an interesting character to to, uh, to see as as part of the um, you know the our traveler campaign. And I've got some. Uh, some of the ideas that I had for it, I'm going to have to modify some of the, the ways that I was going to incorporate your character into the campaign, Brent, but it's not, this is part of the fun of the sandbox game and it is the having to come up with shit in the fly to respond to what's happening on from like dice rolls or from where people go, right? So I'm completely uh, fine with that. And what we'll do is we'll talk to uh, Steve before um, or in, the, in the next session too and, give, and fill him in with uh, your character's backstory. If you guys want to fill that in yourselves as well too and talk about how you guys related to each other, um, you can feel free to do that. You can even be cousins for all I care, you know? So anyway, for those listening at home, thanks so much for joining us for yet another uh, character creation session for our Pirates of Drinax uh, campaign. Uh, as always, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns regarding uh, the session tonight, please don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section and I will endeavor to re- uh, reply 
in a timely fashion. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining us for this. We hope you enjoyed, and we will see you again next time.